What's up guys, Danish Kasamali here. So today I'm gonna cover the story of how I started Silky Socks. I've got our, my new assistant, Mr. Silky Sockerson with me. And we're gonna jump right into it. Let's go. So it all started about seven years ago. I had a client that I was doing t-shirt screen printing for and importing all kinds of apparel for from China. I would go to China regularly, um, go to the factories and the trade shows there and visit suppliers and I was importing, I'm talking basketballs, hoodies, backpacks, uh, drawstring bags, socks, basketball shorts, even earbuds, all kinds of things. And was bringing them in, importing them, working with the suppliers to make sure everything went right, doing quality control, inspection, everything. And the screen print side of the business here was still going good. I would dish out my jobs to local screen print factories and be like a print apparel dealer. But I started to feel like I wasn't really as happy with just being like a screen printer, you know, t-shirt import. The importing part was cool, I was enjoying that. Um, and the product sourcing and whatnot. But I was like, something's missing here. I need to create something like a brand, uh, direct to consumer, kind of like my own thing. And this was around the time that the Nike Elite custom printed socks, it's around 2012 to 13, were just going crazy selling for about sometimes $40 per pair for one pair of custom socks, um, 30 all day. So I was like, what about socks? That would be a cool, unique, kind of different item. So what I did is I took one of the samples that I was importing from, from, from overseas for that customer. I had a few extra samples sitting and I said, let me go try doing sublimation printing on those. Cause I did some research and I saw that the custom Nike Elite and stuff like that was all sublimation, right? So then I contacted a local sublimation uh, printer ink and uh, printer supplier here in LA called Jantex Inks and I said hey um, I'm interested in getting possibly getting a sublimation printer can uh, you tell me more about it can I run a few tests they're like yeah sure come on down we'll we'll run a few tests with you and you come down we'll show you how it works and let's let's work so I was like all right cool let's do that then I went to the supplier and it was one of a sock kind of similar to this a black foot sock uh, and I wanted to see how the print came out and to my amazement with the first sublimation print It just came out beautiful and I was like wow I have to do this. I was like that print is just too Nice, it's too beautiful Like I can't not do it right, but I went back to the client after that and I showed him the sample because it actually had their logo on it too and it was kind of an import for them that I was sampling out, right? Then I they were like, wow, this looks amazing. And I was like, cool, I'm gonna get the printer and start supplying you guys with these custom socks so we could basically use your blank uh, that what I'm supplying you with and print on it and make custom socks for your you know different events, different customers, different projects, all that, right? And it was exciting, so I bought um, the printer, a Muto RJ900X. Then I got a heat press, a small manual 24 by 31 heat press. I guess that's not very small, but it was, I already had a 15 by 15, so I bought a 24 by 31 manual heat press, and I hired a guy to basically do the productions for me. So then we basically started sublimating socks, and it was great. I was supplying the client with, you know, 100, 200, 300 pairs a week and printed and we were kind of rolling with that. Then I wanted to basically grow this thing and there was just one dilemma like that that sock I had had their logo on it, right? So I couldn't really grow the, the business of sublimated socks with uh, their brand on it. Uh, I said I need a, a blank that is basically that I could sell as a blank sock and I could print for other brands and businesses and I could do as a Silky Socks custom sock, right? So then what I did is I contacted my manufacturer and I engineered this sock, the black foot white top, completely private label with no logo, and, and this sock, which is an all white, we call it the streetwear sock. This is the before and this is the after. 
So then I had two styles of sock, one athletic with that extra cushion thickness and one streetwear sock, right? And these are the two I was going to go with and launch SilkySocks.com. Everything was great. SilkySocks.com was already actually launched, but we didn't have these products on there. So we launched the website officially in 2013. Then um, basically what happened was I was excited, right? I went back to my client uh, who I, was, I showed them this sock and I was excited and basically they were like, what the hell are you doing? like no like that's whack like you can't do that you shouldn't do that you shouldn't print for other businesses you print socks for us like they were furious and I was like what like that hit me pretty hard they were like you can't print socks for other people you can't print socks for other brands we don't want you to go into competition with us right and I was like okay so you want me to stay right where I am and serve you you know and have a whole factory set up to serve you but I can't grow my customer base or my brand or my product line or any of that and you have a problem with that it doesn't feel right it doesn't sound right like it sounds like you're just trying to kind of big time me so a little background this was my biggest customer for silkscreen apparel for silkscreen apparel I had a decent customer base you know a nice customer base it was a full-time thing for me um, and I was making a, a decent income from silkscreen apparel. They were spending, that client alone though, was spending about $100,000 a year with me, with silkscreen apparel. So they were my biggest customer by a good margin. Whew, this is quite a story. I get jitters just thinking about it. So yeah, this client was spending 100 grand with me and literally it came to an ultimatum. They gave me an ultimatum saying, look you have two choices you either do socks only for us or like don't do this style sock that's that that's what it was don't do this style sock or we're done doing business with you so i was like okay you know like what that that doesn't seem right so i gave myself a couple of days to kind of sleep on it i'm telling you those days were hard because i just had this nasty feeling like ah God, like why is he doing this or why you know and like they're trying to squash me like I was like I didn't feel right but then I didn't want to give up the biggest client I had you know like that was a big part of my business even my little brothers they were like no you can't lose them you're nothing without them and I'm like no dude like no I have to do this I was like you know it is what it is like if he squat if they if they tell me you can't I gotta do it because they feel threatened, you know? It felt like DJ Khaled, like, they don't want you to make socks. They don't want you to make socks for anybody. So guess what? I made socks for everybody. They don't want you to float in the water. So we float in the water. So, you know, it was one of those things where I knew I was gonna do it. I just gave myself a few days to think about it. And everything in me told me, face your fear and just go for it. So I told the client like, hey, I'm sorry you feel that way, but I'm gonna do this anyway and I'm gonna do silky socks. I can still be your t-shirt supplier, sock supplier and apparel supplier. And they said, nope, I'm done with you. Literally just, I'm done with you. I said, all right, I'm sorry you feel that way. And I proceeded forward with my vision. You know, and since then I took these two styles and built them out, built them out, uh, customized. We built a mobile app where you can customize socks on your phone. We, in, uh, you know, updated our website nicely and had like have nice customizable options where you can add your name on the socks. And built out over two, three hundred designs of silky socks designs inspired by basketball sneakers, kind of the stuff that you know me and my bros and and friends and family that we're into. So it's like our brand. Then to take it even further, I started engineering more dope styles of blanks different colors ooh and then now we've got the headbands arm sleeves leg sleeves so we went from these two styles of socks to 16 different styles of socks specifically for the dye sublimation marketplace and industry right then we have now we have headbands arm sleeves leg sleeves uh, these are cleat covers um, we expanded our machines we've got three uh, printers and and like 
six heat presses, um, which I'll show you. And it was just like one of those things, man, like they, they said you can't do it. So every time like I feel down, I'm dr I'm, I feel like kind of like quitting or giving up or I feel low with silky socks or summer thing. Like I just remember like, no, you gotta keep going because they told you you can't do this. They told you you can't do it. Keep going. Drive, that's a driving force for me. You know, but those days were hard. I lit, how much was Silky Socks making when I first launched? Zero dollars, guys. Zero. Nothing. But I had a vision. In my mind, it was making a lot of money. In my mind, it was helping a lot of customers and bringing a dope, unique product and service for people. And here we are in 2019. And, you know, in, in six years, like, it was just little by little by little by little by little by little by little. Never have taken investment from anyone. Um, no partners either, you know. Um, got a nice team here and a nice staff here, about five in-house people. Got about six freelancers uh, that work with us regularly. Um, and, you know, my dad has been supportive with giving us some space to work with here in, in his building. And the family, my bros and stuff have always been supportive as reps, but, you know, like I built this thing myself. Well, every single day working at it, working at it, working at it. Eventually to the point within about two, two to three years from launch in about 2016, Silk Screen Apparel became my side business and Silky Socks was my main business. And now today, Silk Screen Apparel still exists, but I definitely have a nice set of, uh, hand, you know, uh, loyal customers that don't give me, you know, that come back and kind of repeat customers, but I'm not actively seeking new business for Silk Screen Apparel. Um, basically silkysocks.com is the focus, the brand, and the growth business that I'm pursuing full time and I'm having a great time. Alright, so let's go take a little tour of Silky Socks. Okay, so right now I'm in the office showroom. This is uh, our Muto RJ900X printer. We have three of these now. Um, follow me, we're going to go into the warehouse and check out the rest. This is the Silky Socks warehouse now, this section right here. Um, that section of the warehouse is my dad's and he, he runs his business and gives us kind of, we rent this little section out from him. Here's, uh, we have two more of these guys, one here and one there. Then these are our heat presses. These are the small format heat presses. This one is a 16 by 24. And then these are 16 by 20s. We've got four of these guys set up. So it helps us with extra hand production. Then these are our wide format presses. You can see five pairs of socks being done at one time. Boom, very silky. Whereas these guys can crank out one pair at a time. And as you can see, some transfer prints are printing out here. So, you know, and all this machinery wasn't acquired in one day. It was, you know, once a year, once every, you know, maybe twice a year, we'd get a little something new, something new as we were growing and acquiring uh, more assets for the business. And we'll come over here and meet the team. This is Perla. Perla, can I stop you from Hi. your sock making for yes. a second and get your interview? Hi, uh, my name is Perla and I've been here for almost three years and I do production. This is what I do. Three I years? Almost three years. Wow, that's <laughs> went by kind of fast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, since then I had Aaliyah, your kids have been growing yep. and it's been awesome. So yeah, she's uh, the production's guru, I call her, <laughs> making a lot of socks out here. Then, follow me here. So as you can see, this is like the transfer sheets. This is a, a list of some online orders that she's gonna be making. And she's got the blank socks loaded here. Um, and then she takes them from here to here and does our kind of production process with the heat press. And for more about how to and tutorials on how we print, you'll check out the Silky Socks YouTube channel. All right. Now we come over here and I'm going to grab Monica. 
This is Monica. Uh, Monica, introduce yourself. Uh, my name's Monica. I've been here for about a year. And um, I do printing, I do shipping, um, pull blanks and pull production. Blanks. Yeah. So she's kind of like my my right hand. She'll do, like she said, a little bit of everything. Right now you're pulling blanks? I'm pulling blanks right now. Can you show us these ones? Yeah, so right now I have a headband. I've got an arm sleeve and a leg sleeve. And this is all going to go into our sample pack. Oh, sample pack. Yeah. Okay. As you guys can see. Thank you. <laughs> As you guys can see. So we went from the socks to adding accessories like your other uh, kind of compression items. So, you know, it's kind of that vision that I have for after, we're still the sock kings and we have the most styles and best styles of socks, but I want to start building out other parts of the body in terms of athletic, sports, um, kind of casual wear. And every item we do is sublimation friendly, that's key. I, you know, I, I make sure every item we develop is amazing for sublimation and then that we can also offer it as a printed customized product and supply it as a blank. That's kind of my business model. Here you see uh, Romero, he's my dad's uh, forklift man. So we do get support from uh, my dad's guys once in a while with helping out with uh, moving stuff around, forklift driving, uh, etc. So let's go meet Romero too if you can. Uh, Romero, yes. Uh, come here, one, sec one minute. Yeah, Johnny. Uh, how many years working for Sal? Uh, 17 years. 17 yes. years. A long yes. time. Uh, ¿Cuántos años tienes? Uh, me? Right now? Uh, 56. So when you were? Uh, 39. 39. Okay. Working for Sal is good? Yes. Yeah, you Every day is, is good. It's good? Okay. Thank you. You were a hard worker. I appreciate you. <laughs> but man, 17 years out here grinding. Alright, let's go back into the office now. So guys, wow. That was quite a journey. Quite a story. I feel a little weight off my shoulders telling that and you know I do love thinking and reflecting on it because it gives me energy but I just want to say like um, the no disrespect to like the people that I kind of told the story about I'm not saying it to bash anyone or any other company I'm saying this just to share my story and the struggles and kind of the challenges I went through which make me come out a better person when I come out the other side I'm much stronger and I'm glad I went through that. I'm glad I have that memory because now I'm allowed to, I'm able to just fly higher and stronger and faster and longer. And we do have a great relationship now with that um, those other individuals and companies. So do me a favor, I don't want um, anyone tagging or commenting or asking who it is or whatnot. Again, this story is about silky socks and me and my story and what I went through. And hopefully it inspires you to know that you guys can do it too. Whatever is hard, that's what you want to do. Whatever is more challenging, that's what you want to do. Whatever is, gives you more fear and anxiety and worry and stress, and you're not doing it because of that fear, that's the one you want to do. Don't take the easy path. The easy path for me would have been just to remain a, a screen printer, like you know, a t-shirt guy supplying local businesses with t-shirts, and not try to be different, and not try to take on a product that, like I said, had zero customers and zero revenue, and kind of grow this thing. I was told, socks? You're just doing socks? That's stupid. That'll never be a real business. That's, you're just making counterfeit stuff, like bootleg stuff. Like I was told all sorts of stuff along the way. And still there's people who don't believe in me, but that's okay. I'm just gonna keep going. Let's keep building, guys. Let's keep rolling. Uh, appreciate you tuning in. Do share and subscribe this video. Subscribe uh, this channel and let's keep building. I'm just getting started with this channel and I'm excited for a whole lot more content and dope inspirational videos. You can follow me on Instagram at Danish Kasamali to connect with me further and appreciate you guys. Bless your feet. I'm out.